Yeah, top 10 boers, chapters of 2022, let's go! So, number 10, chapter 1038. This is the chapter where Zoro sees a Grim Reaper. I bet Oda was like, I don't kill off characters, but look, there's a Grim Reaper here. Zoro's actually going to die, and literally nothing came of it. It was just clickbait. Oda added a Grim Reaper for no reason at all, basically. This is also the same chapter where Izo starts fighting a CP0 agent. And Izo dies, and the CP0 agent dies. Did anyone reading the chapter where Izo actually dies think that he died? This was their most random death in all of One Piece. When this arc ended, uh, the characters mentioned that Izo died. I was like, what? He died from what? From being shot? Literally every other character survives being shot, but Izo dies? And the CP0 agent, how was he so weak that someone like Izo killed him? How does that make any sense? Now that we met with Lutzi, and Lutzi is able to keep up with God Luffy, it doesn't make any sense for CP0 agents on Wano. Being weak, being so weak that someone like Izo managed to kill one of them. Number 9 is chapter 1039. This is the chapter where Trafalgar Water T. La uses his awakening ability. And his sword becomes a skyscraper. It becomes the size of a skyscraper. How does that make any sense? Why didn't he use that ability against Do Flamingo? All of a sudden, while fighting against a Yonko, he has the ability to turn his sword into a skyscraper. But never before did he have that ability. Never before did he mention having that ability. Never before was it even hinted that he could do it. Literally, this came out of nowhere. The guy's sword became a skyscraper while fighting Big Mom. He pulled that ability out from his, well, you know where, his ass, his butt. When Do Flamingo was brutally beating, punching and cutting Love's arm off, then he didn't do anything. All he did was lay on the ground. What did he do? Oh, he laid on the ground like a dog. He was like, nah, I'm not gonna use the ability, the secret ability against the guy I hate the most in the world. The guy that killed the most important person in my life. Nah, I'm just gonna let him beat me up. Number 8 is chapter 1036. Chapter 1035 was sadly in 2021. Okay, it was the last chapter of 2021. So I can't add it, but I'll talk about 1036. This is the chapter that starts off with Zoro beating King. Before arriving at Wano, Luffy fought against Katakuri, a Yonko commander. The only reason why Luffy won against Katakuri is because Katakuri injured himself on purpose. Luffy barely won against Katakuri, a Yonko commander. And now, in Wano, Sanji beats a Yonko commander, Zoro beats a Yonko commander, Everyone and their mother is able to defeat a Yonko commander all of a sudden. It doesn't make any sense for me at all. How can the strongest straw hat, Luffy, struggle against a Yonko commander? And in the next arc, he is able to defeat a Yonko. And his strongest uh, straw hat pirates are able to defeat Yonko commanders all of a sudden, when they were never on the same level. The power levels don't make any sense anymore. It's all bullshit at this point. So number 7 on the list is chapter 1040. The chapter where Keith and Law defeat Big Mom, a Yonko. Big Mom was top 5 strongest characters of all time. Keith and Law defeated her. And how did they do it? Well, they got bullshit awakenings out of nowhere. Keith was like, oh yeah, I got this super powerful ability called Awakening, I'm gonna use it against Big Mom. And Law was like, oh yeah, I also have this ability. And uh, the reason why I never used it was some bullshit like, 
It makes me tired. When I use it, I'm so tired. But I always had the ability. I just never used it because, oh, I don't want to get sleepy. Okay, whatever, man. And uh, they defeat Big Mom with no problems at all. A Yonko. They defeat a Yonko with no issues at all. The power system is a complete joke. Number 6. Chapter 1043. Chapter 1042 ended with Luffy dying by the hands of Kaido. And this chapter starts off with Kaido killing a CP0 agent. One shotting a CP0 agent. The last agent was killed by Izo, and now an agent is killed by Kaido. Are these agents made out of paper? How does it make any sense for uh, Rob Lutzi to have an awakening to keep up with Luffy, God Luffy? Luffy defeated the strongest villain in One Piece with no problems at all. And uh, Rob Lutzi was able to keep up with Luffy. How are the CP0 agents in Wano so weak? But the CP0 agents in uh, the EG Dark are uh, way stronger. What are the requirements needed to join CP0? Can any random person join and they just give you a mask and tell you, yeah, yeah, you're a secret agent now? How can one agent be killed so easily, but another agent can fight with a code almost equally? And how is it that none of these CP0 agents have any Devil Fruit abilities at all? Anyways, let's talk about uh, the second reason why this chapter is number 6. The end of the chapter, that stupid smirk on Luffy's face. That was the moment I knew, okay, he's getting a bullshit power-up. This chapter was the moment we knew that, oh, Komu Komu no Mi was never Luffy's true ability. He was always some bullshit god. The entire history of One Piece, the lore of One Piece, was rewritten by Oda. Because he had no idea how he can defeat Kaido without a bullshit power-up. Because he sucks as a mangaka. Number 5. Chapter 1069. This is the chapter where Rob Lutzi reveals that he has an awakening. And he is able to keep up with Luffy one on one with no issues at all. Rob Lutzi reveals that he has an awakening. He fights God Luffy. And the Luffy is unable to defeat him. And a lot of people tell me. A lot of One Piece fanboys tell me. Oh, Luffy was just toying with him. Luffy was just playing with him. Was he? So, Luffy was just playing with Lutzi the entire time. It wasn't a serious fight, okay? So, Luffy is a psychopath. Because Sent on Maro is literally bleeding out on the floor, slowly and painfully dying. And Luffy is like, I'm gonna have some fun with uh, this big cat over here. Is that what you are trying to tell me, fanboys? That Luffy is a psychopath. And uh, the fight ends with Rob Lutzi having a little band-aid on his cheek. That's the only injury he got from fighting a god. Lutzi at this point is stronger than Kaido, let's be honest. Number 4, chapter 1066. The reveal of Vegapunk. The worst design character in all of One Piece. Oda hyped up Vegapunk for at least a decade. And we got this. It's a disgrace. And before time skip Vegapunk, when they showed him with the giant massive head, how was he able to walk with a head that size? He should have been like that one titan in Attack on Titan who was so massive that he had to crawl on the ground. It makes no sense for him to have a head that large, and he can just walk around like nothing's happening. Another reason why this is number 4 of the worst chapters in 2022, it was revealed that Jaguar D. Saul was alive the entire time. Jaguar D. Saul was killed off by Oda in the early 2000s. The fact that he has to bring back a dead character, someone who has been dead for at least two decades, only tells me that we can trust any deaths. At this point he can bring back literally anyone. And also using deaths as an emotional manipulation tool 
only to bring these uh, characters back is a very low and very scummy thing to do by Oda. Number 3. Chapter 1053. This is the chapter where the new bounties are revealed and uh, the new Yonkos are shown and Luffy is a Yonko. But at this point who cares, okay? Luffy is already a god. Why does he need to be a Pirate King? God is a higher position than Pirate King. Let's be honest. And then it's revealed that one of the new Yonkos is Bucky. Bucky the Clown. A joke character. A joke character became a Yonko. That's how low One Piece has gotten. Apparently the world government doesn't know who Bucky is because... They forgot that he was uh, level 1 of Impel Town, the lowest level. He was no threat to anyone. That's why the world government put him in level 1, not level 6. Bucky is a Yonko because the world government thinks that Mihawk and Crocodile work with him. That's what the fanboys tell me. Well, if uh, Mihawk works with Bucky, doesn't it make more sense to make Mihawk the Yonko? There is a reason why this chapter is number 3. It's not only Bucky and Luffy. Yonko status reveal. This chapter butchered Nico Robin's character. Nico Robin after this chapter is an untrustworthy spy. The Straw Hats need to throw Nico Robin's ass out of the crew after this chapter. Nico Robin knew about the location of Pluton the entire time and she didn't tell anyone. She kept it a secret for two years, even from Frankie. Frankie's adoptive father, Tom, died because of these blueprints, and she didn't even tell Frankie. Nico Robin is the kind of character that likes keeping secrets from everyone, even her friends. Straw hats need to throw her ass out! Number 2, Chapter 1044 and Chapter 1045 Chapter 1044 ends with Luffy's Nika reveal. It's the stupid image that you see as the background on this video right now. And chapter 1045 was the chapter that killed One Piece for me. This is the chapter where Luffy fights against Kaido and completely humiliates Kaido. He goes inside Kaido, turns into a balloon, makes Kaido look pregnant. Stretches Kaido's eyeballs out, uses Kaido as a jumping rope. Kaido was built up for almost a decade since Punk Hazard. The entire point of Punk Hazard was to destroy Kaido's artificial devil fruit manufacturing. Then we went to Dress Rosa. The entire point of that arc was to take down Kaido's weapon manufacturing. The main villain of So was Kaido's commander. And this is how it ended. Absolutely pathetic. And number one on the list is the chapter where Luffy defeated Kaido. Chapter 1049. Luffy gets killed by Kaido. He dies. Then he wakes up as a god and easily defeats Kaido. Of course, before defeating Kaido, he toys with Kaido. He plays with Kaido. Luffy literally became the strongest character in One Piece in that single chapter. What is the point of continuing the One Piece story? Can anyone explain it to me? What is the point of becoming the Pirate King once you're a god? A god is a higher position than Pirate King. Oh, Luffy wants to become the Pirate King. Who cares? End the story already. He became a god. You can't go higher than a god. The status of Pirate King is below a god. That's a fact. There is no point to the One Piece story at this point. It's all nonsense. And it was all a waste of time. I made a video a while ago where I said, you know what? The One Piece was finally revealed. And you know what One Piece was? Well, it was a one piece of shit the entire time. 